I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that enemy do not want to play against Rise. Yeah. Ban that one away. Never again. Rise only once. But we'll see. I mean, Rise has happened way more than once so far <laughs> That's in true. both the North American and European LCSs. So uh, he's lost occasionally. Uh, both Cloud9 and Gambit have lost with Rise. So some sometimes it works out the whole plan. But either way, Kez is gonna lose. Uh, actually, sorry, Seraph's gonna lose to Diddley. I don't know why I thought it was gonna go to Kez. Uh, obvious ban there. Flare's not going to get his hacker rib. Uh, so far, bans you kind of expect as we go through the next couple. Yeah, basically, you know, highlights for each player. Uh, very player centric. Still, sort there of. Inox definitely uh, really has taken to the AP Kogma mid. Definitely one of his one of his favorites. Yeah, very Master true. Then still available for him. And last time around, I believe he went for Varus when uh, Kogma wasn't there, and uh, unfortunately for enemy esports, they did not go. As well as they would have hoped, Flares was allowed his Aurelia last game, and it went pretty well. The well, no, it didn't go very well because they lost level one. But we'll see if that champion pulls respect again. Now there's the Varus ban, so two bans at Inox's big poke champions. Mm -hmm. Though all assassins like Cassidy are still up. Well, let's see what uh, TDK decide to first pick here, because all junglers have been Ooh. let through. So that leaves top lane carry for Seraph. Rise is already off the table. Nidalee's off the table. Rumble is a huge, yeah. huge force towards that mid game. Can win a team fight pretty much by himself. And that's the kind of champion that Seraph really wants to use nowadays. Absolutely. He's all about trying to carry the team from the top side. Yeah, and it used to be doing things like split push Nidalee or like really good Lissandra TP flanks. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Rumble a bit more of the direct approach here. It's definitely a player I think can carry. though. What it's worth, we've seen Aurelia into Rumble be a very strong matchup for the Aurelia. We've seen Kali Trolls uh, do a great job of, of punishing that matchup. And I don't know, to me, that's what I feel like Flares would do, and it's his style as well for enemy, just to find one of those lanes to start hard carrying from. True. And Crash just picks the lane to go into. Ah. Not Corky for... Uh... Oh, no, this is Otter's side. Ha -ha. Yeah. Latman's the one who keeps on picking Corky over and over. But yes, Otter will get another chance on one of these very mobile AD carries. Preferring Vayne, now opting for the Callista. We've talked about how strong a lane she can be when comboed with basically any of the supports that are still left up. Yeah, absolutely. His body drop's favorite so far has been Morgana, a champion that very few others have picked up throughout the LCS so far. So uh, could be an easily acquired lane for enemy, and they would, they would be actually quite strong for the two of them. TDK have plenty of room to make their choices, of course. Mid laners fairly untouched this point. Also, any other junglers up, and it's Sejuani for Kez. All right. The famed combo. Ice and fire here. Sejuani and Rumble. That's a team fight victory if you can get your enemies yeah. grouped up. Enemy, though, themselves, speaking of which, <laughs> they, they were criticized for not taking these power picks. They started out with two power picks right off the bat. Yep. Gragas in the jungle, Kalissa in the bottom lane. So they're going for... Uh, well, it's probably not going to be doubled up on AD carries with Vayne and Kalista. Yeah, I've really synergized very well. I, I mean, maybe, maybe like top lane Vayne beats up Rumble, but I feel like it's pretty unlikely. You know, one thing I'm sad about, though, with the, how popular Rumble Sejuani is, people aren't comboing Sona with it for the Song of Ice and Fire. I just yeah. feel like it's a it's a reference waiting to happen. Missed and opportunity. I know every single time they just pick a different support, and it's just silly. Either way, last few picks for enemy esports. They are going to save <laughs> mid lane pick for last. It seems like everyone got well excited for Bard once it got picked earlier today. I don't understand. It's seen it. It's old news, Freak. We saw it. All right, yeah, we already saw Bard. Nobody cares. <laughs> there you go, guys. And Bard is... <laughs> Inox holds his hands up. I have picked Bard. Are you not entertained, North American fans? Bard in here for Body Drop alongside Callista. The Aurelia top lane does come through for Flares. And instantly, Ash Oriana for TDK. The novelty factor has worn out very quickly from poor Bard. <laughs> the Bard support. But uh, Ash, very strong. We've gone, been over that many times. Is good against Callista because she has very strong stand-up, uh, just point-and-click auto-attack damage for the trades. Uh, very difficult to outplay uh, her basic kit with jumps. Now the arrow, that's another, another whole other beast. Well, that's actually a good thing for Callista. I think Ash into Callista is a very weak matchup. Uh, the slows don't affect her jumps, and if she's going to toss a stun out there, the support just face tanks it and gets fates called out. I actually uh, am a little bit concerned for the laning phase or the playmaking of the TDK AD carry until you get to team fight phase where you have double the ice and still the one serving a fire. 
Well, it's definitely all about team fight here for TDK with the Orianna being thrown on in on top. If they can wombo that combo, then they can win too. <laughs> Very simple strategy yeah. here. Yeah, I feel like I know exactly TDK. what TDK wants to do with a lantern to help keep the Ash safe. Now the last pick comes through for Inox. It's gonna be LeBlanc here in the mid lane. So LeBlanc versus Orianna, the opted into matchup with the poke mids out. And that's gonna be the full lineup here. We talked about TDK being wombo combo. Enemy Esports a lot more individualistic. Uh, though they have some cool plays they can make, of course, with those barred ulties. All right, looks like everyone swapped everything where they wanted it to be. I think there's no big crazy flex picks here. It's not jungle bard support Gragas. Sorry, guys. And right. TDK looking for their first win on the board. Now they've got one more of their starters here. Enemy Esports looking to tie up their overall record to two and two. Yeah, enemy also probably going to look to split this squad up. Uh, Gragas going to help, help out with that with the ultimate. But yeah, basically separate here. We'll see if enemy can get a split push going with that Aurelia. Hinges on that early laning phase. Can he get a lead versus the Rumble? If so, we've seen what happens. Yeah. Uh, Kali actually did a really good job of uh, versus Team Liquid, getting that Aurelia ahead early and then transitioning it into split push power. Mm -hmm. Flares himself also had a very similar game on that one that they couldn't quite close out as well. So we'll see if that can happen one more time with the end game going a bit better. For now, the game's about to get started, so start sending your votes. Tweet at LOL Esports, either hashtag TDK win, hashtag NME win. Let us know who you think is going to win this game. And we will get ourselves into it very shortly here. TDK looking for their first win. This should be, to their predictions, their last game with substitutes as they expect their mid laner and AD carry to come on back. Enemy Esports still full steam ahead, looking to get to two and two. All right, let's get on the rip and see if they can make it happen here. Big thing to watch for Enemy Esports is their level ones. We've seen a catastrophic one yesterday up against Team Liquid. We'll see if they play uh, afraid of the repercussions. Maybe she would early trade. A little bit less inclined to go for tower dives, maybe. Pretty much, yeah. Standard lane, safe start here for both squads. Uh, defensive Ooh. wards coming out. Bodied, Bodied winning in gold. Yeah, getting the uh, advantage there. Used all of his stacks, though. Backs off from the trade. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing I do think is interesting is the. Wonderful multiple uses of Bard's ultimate. Uh, the difficulty, though, is that there's so many forms of follow-up engage for TDK. Like, if he were to ult his team after getting Sedge ulted or something, you just place the ball and then shockwave him right to come out. So I don't know if you can reliably use uh, defensive Bard ults to, like, dodge damage. Yeah, you don't want to use that on your team when you're facing a, uh, an AoE combo squad like TDK. Anytime that a member of enemy has to stand still is going to be bad news for them. All these champions rely on mobility. Uh, you know, isolated skirmishing. That's where they thrive. And Ox on the assassin. Otter going to try and skirt the fight. We'll see how Flares does. Because it looks like uh, he's going to start out with that camp. Uh, just do the Raptors. Get a level advantage. Same thing for the dual lane. They're going to get a level advantage here. Try and do Gromp. It will be matched by the Krugs from TDK. Uh, the one thing here, let's see if Seraph can shove the minions quick enough to get them into the turret. He's grouped them up right now. This is the counterplay to the enemy trying to start a jungle camp and get that early level two against you. By shoving them into the turret, he gets to deny them. And it looks like he'll be on fairly even footing, even when Flares is able to teleport back in. So strong move there from Seraph. Got a wave. And it's able to reset before either of them return. Looks like he's going to grab some extra protection for himself with the ward, as well as Stock up on regeneration for lane phase. Yeah, it's interesting to note, uh, you do get slightly more experience for being the one who jungles in that case, but Seraph, even though he missed yeah. one of the caster minions, walks away with more gold. So he's got consumables to the very slight XP advantage of flares. We'll see if that means much of anything as it pans out. Looks like a ward is already going to be put down in that northern river for Seraph to stay safe in case Trashy does come to gank up there. Yep, actually both sides there. Bisho as well, warding that top side of the river. Because uh, they figured that there was a bottom side start. However, Gragas 
did not start bottom. He ends bottom, and we'll see what trash he can pull off. Gargas, after getting the double buffs, uh, can just continue to roam around. Even though he ends the double buffs around half health, because of his passive, easily just spend his time taking crabs, roaming up and down the river. He'll get right back up to full health before he's uh, looking to go for one of those ganks. And that's why he has those really strong level 3 ganks that we see so often from him. Looks like Trashy got pinged, actually, by TDK. Like, they just pinged the location of the fog before. They didn't actually see him. They just, I think, guessed where he might be, and they were correct about that one. So no gank actually comes through for Trashy. A little bit of time lost by him. Meanwhile, Kez, of course, is still farming his own jungle on a very slow path. He finishes the Ranger's Trailblazer, Trailblazer and then goes for his blue buff. You actually don't need blue buff on first clear. I like uh, leaving... If you're, if you're committing to a hard farm route, I like leaving one of your buffs up, clearing all of the small camps and just one of your buffs. Uh, you go back with plenty of money to get wards on top of your upgrade, uh, and you will have a substantial experience advantage because then you can go through another uh, full clear of your jungle. He yep. stops off and does get crap first, but uh, that is uh, w basically my ideal hard farming. Right? Nice. Yeah, he even gets a full blue buff now for the, the secondary jungle clear, so I, I agree. This is actually... Pretty good. Kez should be set up to gain a whole lot of gold and XP. He's going to probably remain above in terms of farm, but actually goes into invade on Trashy, puts a ward down, gets pushed right back out, but you can see there's a level lead. Well, and Gragas, even down a level, happy to take a one versus one with Sedge. Gets the first attack in as well and chases him off. Won't really affect either lane, though. A lot of defensive wards uh, put up there by Kez since he visited the top side, dropping off his pink as well. Looks like Trashy is going to be able to snag that early, though. So high value there from Trashy. Chasing him out of the jungle and being able to claim that pink ward takes away a lot of that uh, cash discrepancy. Yeah. Well, right now, the jungler, one holding near mid, one holding near the top lane. To talk about that top lane matchup, though, uh, Seraph, though he's down slightly in minions, has actually burned through all of Flares' health potions, and Teleport's still a minute away from cooldown. So a very awkward recall forced onto Flares. Kez being around the corner means he's got to just sacrifice a wave or two. W to kill the range minions. Does get the flash from Bishu uh, without actually connecting, but just the presence of Trashy. Ooh. Good hook, good flay, but Ash, not the best follow-up champion, can only do so much. Gets hit back up by Otter, and enemy nearly wins the trade. Uh, yeah, no damage from TDK went towards the AD carry there, so Callista actually happy that Bard took the brunt of it, even though Bard did go with him one mana potions rather than all health or biscuits. Mm -hmm. See what Trashy can do to capitalize. Jungle invade here. Well, he's oh, he's got Inox at his back as well. And he's going to spot Kez. Kez does have flash. Bishu doesn't in case they find him. But he slinks right on down to the bottom side of the screen. A lot of pings again for the blue team. Looks like they are aware. Well, uh, Inox leaves lane. Yeah. So they're very curious. Oh, wow. Jumps right on in. Does not even look for the chain right now. They're just trying to steal some Krugs away, but TDK's dual lane is right there. Maybe a bit of fear in the minds of everybody. A lot of alone time for Bishu in the mid lane. Very happy to be able to catch up. Uh, take some minions uncontested for himself. And it actually didn't cost TDK anything. Because Kez was so safe with his roam down bottom around to the Krugs, Kez doesn't actually lose out on anything either. So TDK with a safe play, able to get a small advantage there. Well, this might be a big advantage, though. Seraph going to do a lot of damage. Oh. Great dodging on both Harpoons. Flare saves his flash for that. 100% necessary, or he would have had to burn a summoner there. One of those Harpoons lands, and Seraph commits 100% to that sucker. That's going to mean another Force Recall from Flares. All the same, though, his buy only gets him Boots 1. He can't. He still cannot afford the rest of Phage. We'll TP back to this lane. Seraph slowly eking out bigger and bigger advantages. The, to me, all-star of TDK. Seraph winning his lane. Yeah, and you can tell the philosophy that he has. It's, it's always a question of, you know, how many minions are you willing to trade for harass damage in lane? And Seraph is willing to go for the harass pretty much every time. And he makes up for it, even though he misses some minions going for the harass, by pulling your opponent out of lane, forcing them back to base, you know, burning their cooldown, uh, their teleport cooldowns, and uh, the first time burning him, uh, 
shoving the minions into the lane to try and even up those numbers. Yeah. And now a TP advantage for Seraph. He'll join the wave just in time to get most of the experience. And with Equalizer up right now, any kind of decent deep ward in the bot lane means an easy TP flank and an easy engage onto this enemy duo lane. Kez already sneaking Hold back around. up as well. He's two minutes away from level six. He just needs like something to die nearby. Asher lands an Otter flash box. The flay into landed as well. Otter flashes out, but Kez is right here, lands the Q, doesn't oh! actually land the Otter. Forced to flash to chase, gets the first blood. Now Latman doing what damage he can back on a body drop. They will get the double kill, both going to Kez. Dodge that, Kalista. <laughs> Latman right to the face. Nice Ash arrow to set everything up. Bishu though, no flash. Yeah, that's gonna be a really good two-man shockwave. Trashy turrets don't like him this weekend. Forced to run away. The flash engage doesn't succeed. Bishu gets out safe. Was Seraph lower health than... Oh, Flares is lower health than Seraph, so Seraph's teleport was probably canceled by an E from Flares. Uh, good heads-up play by Flares not to die after committing to that, or will he? And Seraph is ulting practically on cooldown to push Flares around the map. His team can get Dragon safely. The TPs are on cooldown anyway, so why not just push the guy around? TDK living up to their name. The first Dragon has gone down, and they're up about 1,000 gold. Yeah, after that very strong move, Dragon, our bottom, it actually didn't even cost them a Sejuani ultimate, as you said, pre-6. Now Kez is going to have a, a return gank possibility because Kalista, no summoners. Uh, mid lane. Actually, Inox still has his flash. Flares, though, having to burn his after committing to the teleport interrupt. Yeah, I actually went back also and looked at vulnerable. it. He queued to a minion, landed the landed the blades, or landed the E to stun yeah, Seraph, and then, yeah, just got ulted and had to flash away. That's the only way that he could cancel it. Yep. All right, so Team Dragonite sitting on a small lead, and actually, even though they're winning by two kills, the uh, the gold lead does not uh, suggest that that much, right? The kills are worth more than the gold lead is right now, so farm going pretty well for the enemy lineup. Trashy's caught back up in farm. Otter's still ahead right here. We'll see how the rest of the game pans out. Inox with a blue buff. Still trying to put pressure on Bishu, but can't do it. Another oh. arrow lands. Otter's going to be in a bad way here. Slows land. A double stun from Body Drop saves Otter's life and dodges the hook too. Cheers for the Bard, and rightfully so. There's the return gank we're looking for with the Sedge level 6. Because he doesn't have flash, though, not able to capitalize. Great Bard Cosmic Binding to stop him in his tracks. Again, though, 100% accuracy so far from Latman as far as that Ash Arrow onto the Callista. Yeah. And you have to make sure you hit the AD carry. Again, it's just useless to hit the enemy support if the Fates call us up at all. But a big trade and a body drop. They just go all in for Smoothie, because guess what? Gragas is here to help get an assist. The Ren finally comes in. Otter gets his first kill of the game. All right, answer there for enemy. Much needed down bottom. They want to get this Callista. Uh, oh, up to Bloodthirster. Looks like he's going for the uh, Max and Q, yeah. Q Max route, yeah. The more more poke oriented. Yeah, normally I was wondering like why he didn't rend already, but it's because <laughs> yeah. it's rank one rend. That actually might not have killed Smoothie there. So smart play, understanding that he did the Q Max build. And as we have a quick pause, looks like it is with either Otter or Body Drop. Looks like Body Drop here. We'll figure out what that ends up being over time, but. We're in a very close game here. You're seeing 16.4 to 16,000 gold. Both these teams really looking forward to getting a win here today. And it is a very close match. Yeah, going below for blow in the bottom lane with ganks. Enemy able to strike back and get some cash for themselves. Also, the kill did go to Callista down bottom, so Otter will be happy with that one, whereas Astro is only... Only able to grab assists on those yeah. multi-man ganks. And so. that's true. When you share the assist gold like that, it's just not very much money. Sometimes you get a game where you're like 0-0-15 and the assist streaks start pooling in. But yeah, sharing an assist with two people, it's basically no money. When ganks happen like this, you're not even behind in the bot lane when just the other guys get assists on the double kill. So uh, you saw them fire back really easily. It's also worth noting that these two supports are probably the two best 
like gank assisting supports, you like land through <laughs> their magical journey the jungler in, and you're like, yeah. great, this is so much easier than walking forwards. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes you'd think, oh, it's so bad that the jungler is getting this last hit. It's actually very, very strong, especially for Kez, who's a guy who likes to rush Sightstone. He gets to get a Sightstone, and it actually doesn't cost him jungle clear speed. He was so rich, he also was able to get the AoE clear with the Bami Cinder. So he'll be able to clear out the jungle and get the vision down for his squad. Yeah. And that's something that TDK have really thrived on, is the amount of focus that Kez puts on controlling vision. That's true. Uh, Kez has been, I think, an unsung hero for TDK. As we heard Trashy talk about him, he said this man has improved greatly over the last couple of years. Uh, Trashy also says the secret to unlocking Inox's potential is just letting Inox be Inox. <laughs> Easy. His time in EG, he told me that he didn't really feel confident playing. Um, he he didn't really play the champions he liked to play. Um, but in on this team, we basically just allow him to play whatever he thinks is strong. Um, and we all have high, high hopes for him, and we, we, um, we think he's, he's doing very well. Um, so I think it comes down to that, that we believe in him, and, and he, he has the freedom to play what he, he thinks is, is good. Yeah. I'd I don't think many people would argue that LeBlanc is good, so good pick there, Inox. Good job, Inox. He sussed it out properly. But yeah, I mean, he was one of the early adopters to AP Cogma, one of the early adopters to Cassidy, and honestly, I feel like Inox's sense for strong champions is you know, pretty darn good. Everyone else seems to have the same opinion as him about a week later. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, you know, I think there's still a lot of growth still in store for Inox. This is his first season playing as a mid laner, from what I can understand. And yeah. uh, he was great for Challenger. He was the best mid laner in Challenger. And then you get in the LCS, and you've got guys like Bjergsen, Pobalter, and Phoenix, and it gets a bit harder. And, and we've seen Inox have uh, a bit of a harder time now in the LCS mid lane, but... We definitely see players improve over time, and maybe that can continue for him. Exactly how early of an adopter of Cassidy was he? Because beta. I, I was a tread <laughs> lightly because people are very quick to give credit to people for early adopting, mm -hmm. you know, champions before everybody's using them, before they're powerful. Sometimes if you're playing the champion before you even got the buff, then that's not you don't get credit for that because he's not strong yet. <laughs> I suppose. Yeah, I, I know. you've made this argument before. I forget if you've done it on or off camera. I, I still just like to believe in the players. <laughs> I'm generally on the, on the more positive and uh, side like, of things. If you told me yeah. uh, right after the Rise rework oh, I see. Uh, that someone was playing Rise, and oh, yeah, he was the first one to do it. He's an early adopter of Rise. He knew it was going to be OP all along. <laughs> you don't get credit for that, man. That's fair. Rise was not... <laughs> that was not like, that's not re the same Release bar players, yeah. things like that. Release NAR. Okay, you know, I, I feel you on that one. Um, that's fair. Assessment of balance, I guess, might be uh, a suspect skill then. Uh, if we haven't said it, by the way, uh, Body Drop says he was experiencing, experiencing an audio issue. What's uh, good about that is that uh, the audio issue, we know that uh, they should be able to fix that without having to restart the game. However, they do take a little bit longer. Okay, so, so we'll have, have to sit and listen to that. Yeah, well, that's a wonderful thing, though. Listening to, to you, Kobe, is one of the highlights of my day. <laughs> Wish I could say the same. You could. <laughs> you could lie to me, and I would believe you, Kobe. Oh, I can't say the same. Same! Oh, man, that's so wonderful. Thank you. I'm glad I'm the highlight of your day, Kobe. Never tell me otherwise. Um, okay. So, 12 minutes into the game, certainly very close. Seraph has so far done a pretty darn good job of controlling his lane. The net result of that hasn't actually been much. 3 CS. Yeah, it, got it, him. But Seraph is, like, winning the lane. Like, he's always got pressure. Flares is constantly under his turret. The guy's flash is down right now. But Flares is TP and Seraf doesn't because they got mistimed. Uh, all the ultis are back up. And right, as you said, the minion kills are like basically the same here. So, um, you know, one props to Seraph for winning his lane, but one props to Flares for like just holding on so darn well where you can't even tell. And it's always kind of the way that you play most Aurelia matchups too. In the early phases, you're, you're just taking punches and, you know, you're trying to eke out your CS, getting up towards your Trinity Force yeah. uh, when he can go aggressive. He's also opted for the Phage first rather than, you know, trying to go with the Sheen the or Sheen. some all-in potential with, a, you know, jungle coordination or something like yeah. that. He's also maxing W on uh, Aurelia. I know uh, oh. the, the Equilibrium Strike, the E max, was the, kind of the new thing as of last year, but he's going back to the old school auto attack you a whole bunch style. The sustain is helping him a little bit in the lane, of course. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, if Trashy does land the CC, of course, there is good follow up, but just kind of putting out things as they're going on. I don't see anything otherwise very special. Oriana, since probably a long time ago, I've been maxing Q pretty much solely. There was a while where Distortion was the fad, but, or Dissonance rather, but that's 
Not the case. Bishu, Max, and Q. Just give you guys skill orders, because why the heck not? Max volley on Ash, no surprise there. Thrash maxing the hook. Interesting, actually, three and hook, two and flay. So he's like mixing them back and forth. It's been a long time since I've done skill orders, Kobe. I got excited. All right. You're on a roll, man. Just keep going. All right. Choo choo. Uh, obviously, bottom drop maxing Q. Okay, I was just joking. Don't keep going. Let's well, get back into the game. There's actually one thing to note, which is that Lust Boy was. Uh, which is that Lust Boy uh, maxed Magical Journey second, not the health packs. I didn't know that because I don't play any Bard. Um, but worth pointing out. So as Body Drop hits level 8, we can see what he goes for. Uh, we resume the game, the test. Body Drop said the audio issue was not fixed just yet, so more troubleshooting to go, more fixing to go. Hopefully this will be uh, turned around soon enough. Yep, so we can get back onto the field. Both of these teams eager to get back. As we said, Enemy trying to rebound from a really rough day yesterday. Uh, against Team Liquid and TDK. First time up on the stage here with Smoothie. And uh, welcome. Yeah. You know, says, buddy. Welcome. Yeah, I mean, I guess they at least played on stage for the Challenger Finals. So these guys have at True. least All right. been in the building playing this League, stage. But professional. I mean, yeah. this is Smoothie's first professional game of League of Legends, if I can, unless he played it as a sub for somewhere, but I don't believe that happened here. So uh, that can always just be an added extra sort of thing. I mean, I remember I used to, uh, way back in the day, I was a Warcraft 3 competitor, and uh, I'd played in a couple international tournaments, but when you play League of Legends on a stage, it's just a little bit different. It's a lot of new things to get used to. Uh, just sometimes, just the most random changes that make it very different in your mind. I definitely do, especially with a live crowd. I remember shaking. Yeah? Oh, really? Yeah. Chaster actually was complaining about it. Cause I was <laughs> shaking the table? His, his keyboard was vibrating. <laughs> His keyboard's a cell phone. That, was, that didn't work. <laughs> We're going to move on from that one. We're going to ignore the fact that I made that reference. The boos are deserved. It's uh, Wait, is that moo or boo? I want to make sure. That <laughs> <laughs> ah, clear that time. Yeah. <laughs> See, that, that happened when, um, when CLG, like the CLG lineup went up for the, the previous match. Mm. Uh, Dash was like, are they booing? He's like, no, they're saying moo because everyone's a fan of the support player there. Uh, so it's always interesting, like, when their name is really similar to Boo, you don't hear it quite right. For any aspiring pros out there, don't put your name close to Boo, or you won't have any fans. Uh, or it won't appear that way. Where they like, actually, all the fans just feel like they hate you. <laughs> I love you, freak. I appreciate that. Thank you for still lying to me today, by the way. That really helps my self-esteem. Um, all right, so. 12 minutes in, we've actually managed to cross uh, 20 seconds in the last uh, 10 minutes here as uh, the game time had ticked forward during the unpause section. And honestly, like, it's so early into the game, it's hard to talk about much of the interactions here. Uh, we know TDK is playing a standard tried and true 5v5 team fight comp. The fact that they've been holding up in their lanes quite well, despite what I would consider a couple of bad matchups, is pretty impressive to them. Mm -hmm. um, We'd, I, we'd seen it really beat up Rumble. We know Clis is good into Ash. Yeah, and I do like the choice as well to go with uh, you know five on five oriented comp when uh, they are still working with subs. They've split their practice time among multiple people. Yeah, uh, very clear uh, what their objective is. Everybody group up and hit your spells. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Always uh, the objective. And and of course individually they're all pretty good players, right? These guys are. I think pretty much every single one of them, Challenger and Solo Key, they've clearly got the mechanics, just a matter of landing the skill shots and then saying, well, the arrow hit, let's go hit the other buttons. I think that's going to be pretty likely. Either way, though, looks like we are still trying to troubleshoot the issue. So as we work this out on the stage, we're going to send it over to the guys on the analyst desk. Thank you, Freak. And we're pretty early into this game. It's, we haven't gotten too far in, so there's only so much that we can break down here. Yeah. Important things to note, though, are, are, are the uh, two kills on uh, on the side of TDK uh, for the jungler as well as a dragon taken by the jungler. Why is he taking the two kills? <laughs> he's, yeah, he's not he's not moving. He's, not moved. he's, he's <laughs> gonna take those kills secured. But I think that's uh, you know when we look at TDK and what we said in the past, the way that this team is most likely going to win with their with the subs still in the game uh -huh. is by taking early leads. They need to establish their dominance in lane because they're not gonna have the necessarily the coordination that the rest of these teams have when you move into the late game. Personally, I'd be very impressed if they are able to win this game because I mean we talk about them the way they practice they're still trying to scrim with their eventual squad they scrimmed what was it two or three games with the sub squad but now 
it's just not enough practice. Have they ever played with this lineup, right, outside of a few days? And uh, lo and behold, Kez ganks the lane of the 80 carry and support, and they get a double kill right at the start. Yeah, I like seeing that from Kez, though, because he was the guy who didn't have a whole bunch of early game pressure. And now that we've seen him have consistent early game pressure, I think that's improvement for him. But then you were talking about if they get a victory. This, I like this team comp from them, though. Mm. I think this is a really good team composition. Sejuani, Rumble, and all the pieces seem to come together with it with an Oriana, too. Mm -hmm. This is something that I feel like if TDK just group up and do a ball of death, they can take down enemy in a team fight. Whereas enemy's composition is a little all over the place, and they lack wave clear. Yes. They don't have any wave clear in this composition that doesn't that isn't like safe. They yeah. have the LeBlanc wave clear, but that's risky. Yeah, we were talking about that early. It, it did seem like NME. Uh, one thing I, I did like the bans from TDK. They banned out Varus and Kogma, mm -hmm. which basically tried to take. It almost tried to take poke wave clear out of Inox's wheelhouse. It puts him on an assassin, and in the TSM game we saw the Sivir with LeBlanc, which is backup wave clear. But here, Callista, LeBlanc, Aurelia, Gragas, Bard. If they do fall behind and start losing turrets, there's no way of catching up to that. And if TDK, you know, with their sub squad and all, can actually get some group synergy going and push lanes uh, with their superior wave clear, uh, it could be really hard to come back. The yeah. interesting thing for me, though, uh, about TDK's pick ban is the Ash. Because, I mean, they hadn't seen the LeBlanc pick come through yet, but it did. It seems a little strange to me that you would pick that immobile carry, the one that could be susceptible to an Aurelia diving in, uh, you know, along with maybe an Assassin, since you, you, you're forcing Enox onto Assassins. You banned out his poke wave clear champions. You know he's going to end up on Cassidy and LeBlanc, right? So why would you pick an Ash into that and take or leave for a greater opportunity for consistent damage being taken out of the fight? So what would you take? I would probably. I would. Are if, what? There are reasons, right? Okay. I mean, obviously. Well, wait, let me yeah. to answer your yeah. question real quick. I would honestly rather a Illusion or a, a Corky in this scenario. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Well, so I'm not a big fan of both those champions right <laughs> now. I feel like AD carry roll. You can get a lot more bang for your buck there. And they did dissuade the Sivir with the Callista pick. But yeah, the fact that Ash is very accessible is a big deal. But they're thinking that Thresh is going to keep her a little safe and. What were you going to say about right. this? Right, now, now the merits of Ash. There's yeah. a lot of debate. I mean, a lot of times, especially for TDK, and they're trying to win, they're trying to pick for the lanes. Uh, depending on who you talk to, Ash versus Callista can go either way. So some people think Ash has a pretty decent advantage on Callista, especially if you can get an early advantage. You outrange her. Yes, she can jump away, but you're slowing. You trade with Volley. And Callista's one of her biggest strengths is the laning phase to then snowball later in the game. And if Ash has a stronger laning phase than the Callista, it's a strong pick, as well as... You know, one, one thing about Callista, she hops around a bunch in team fights. If you hit her with a three and a half second stun before the fight, she's not going to hop very far. So those are the things I like about Ash. Uh, I don't think they're necessarily considering like, oh man, in team fights, she's going to be vulnerable to all these single target assassins because they've supplemented the rest of their team uh, with AOE team fighting abilities. Mm -hmm. So if people do dive the Ash, they should still be able to win the team fights and they get a strong one. Yeah, yeah I just think it, essentially it makes it a very AD carry centric team in the sense that you are going to have to protect her. Uh, you know, I do uh, recognize I, I, the. I do recognize that right. in, in when you are ahead, yeah. absolutely, the Ash becomes one of your biggest uh, engagement tools. Ash mm -hmm. arrow into a very long, uh, large stun. Follow up with a Sejuani ultimate. I mean, whoever you hit is not going anywhere. They are dying. Yeah. Um, so again, all the merits understood there. And as you mentioned, with her laning phase, if she can't get an advantage, that's. Quite possibly why they decide to send Sedge down there very early. Let's get that lane rolling, unfortunately. Ice lane. Yeah, the ice, ice plus ice. You know, unfortunately, the kills did go on to Sedge as opposed to Ash, but still the assist there will help. It just seems a little odd to me that you force, uh, you know, a mid laner onto an assassin. And we've seen what LeBlanc can do over the past few days. We've seen LeBlanc's kill 100 to 0 Maokai's. Yeah. You, at any point, if that Ash dies, you you know you're leaving yourself open. I understand to a pretty scary why you don't like the Ash pick, yeah. but I'm, I, I I mean it, it's it coupled with an Orion and a Thresh, in the right? of this team comp. It's not even a protect the Ash team composition. It's yeah. it it's the fact that the, with Rumble, Sejuani, and Oriana, that is such a better team fighting team than Aurelia, Gragas, LeBlanc. That it doesn't matter if they kill your Ash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. The Ash is for the laning phase, and so they can snowball and finish the game. It, it doesn't matter in the team, in my opinion. Yeah. The I think that's what they're going. The for. Ash is also relatively safe. It's coupled with the Oriana and the Thresh, so you're going to get some sh some shields, and also it's multi threat. There's three people, four people here you have to think about if you're enemy because you have to worry about where the Sejuani's throwing her ultimate, what the Rumble is doing during the fight, and where the Orianna's placing the ball. There's a lot on your mind, and getting to that Ash 
might not be the first thing you can do, especially with his composition, because it's really just going to be LeBlanc, Aurelia jumping in, Gragas maybe a little bit as well. But I feel like TDK is going to be the one starting most of these fights instead of playing on the back foot. So I think they're kind of like our best way of defending the Ash is to just pile into you and keep that front line inside of your team. All right, well, with that, we'll see how these picks develop as the game goes. Yeah, the problem is fixed. The teams are ready to head back into the game, so let's send it back to our casters for the call. Thank you very much, Das. Great analyst desking so far on the day. We are back, and we think we're about ready to get back into the game. Uh, the last computer has been replaced. We've got a new one that's hopefully working. Kobe, I guess it's the uh, last computer seemed to be pretty broken. All right. Yes, actually, let's put this in terms you can understand, Freak. That computer was more Baroque than my classical music station. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kobe. Guys, that was hilarious. You should be laughing right now. That was only for you. <laughs> I love it! All right, let's get to the game. <laughs> All right, back into the game. Body Drop is a new computer. It seems to be working, so here we go. Uh, again, we are 12 and a half minutes in, 13 minutes in. A close game with TDK winning and kills. Flares uh, TPing into the bot lane. Will get the stun on a smoothie, and battle has begun. The Q lands so much damage being dealt, and right away. And we get the kill. Yeah, great choice there from Flares. Uh, targeting Thresh not only because uh, Ash still has both summoners up, but also the possibility of the Lantern be able to survive there. And they will gain control of bottom lane off of that move. This is going to be a trade, though, because Seraph, as we've seen all game long, constantly shoving the wave, pressuring into the turret. Let's we'll see how quickly he can take it, though. Yeah, bot lane goes down. Looks like top lane died at exactly the same time here. So outer turrets have been traded exactly. Seraph got some time to farm and shove a wave in here. Two kills to two means enemy esports actually still down a little bit in kills. So the farm lead has started to go TDK's way here as they're also sitting up one dragon here on the blue side. Well, Max has uh, a ton of money in his pockets right now. He needs to buy soon. Yeah, uh, and as far as that, you know, early sight stone that we were going to track from Kez that he got off of those uh, last hits for the first couple kills, he's used it all on the top oh, side. Enemy come from the bottom man, side. Though. The flash Q from Body Drop, explosive cask. Otter gets the kill. That was extremely well executed. Is that a bard yell from the crowd? I think he deserves one for that play. Beautiful flash binding. And they were able to take down Bishu. All right. Well, get ganked by enemy support. You're going to have a bard time. And TDK now tied in gold as enemy have caught up a little bit. <laughs> that one hurt, actually. <laughs> Just like bard ganks. All right. Well, let's take a look because that vision control is still massively in favor of TDK. Uh, save yeah. for that one opening where they just got sideswiped from the river. Body drop trying to do some work there and gain enemy yeah. some territory to work with. Earlier you had mentioned the fact that Kez getting those two kills helped with the early sight stone. You do see the item lead matter right ah. there. Body drop gets caught up and good by Ash Arrow just to look cool. Inox is fine. All right, TDK answering back, making the three kills each, and the uh, overgression by body drop gets punished. All right, let's see what they can transition to. One pink ward kill. Aren't able to clear out the second one, but Flare's already heading down. They're trying to defend against a possible dragon movement. There is a teleport on Seraph, by the way, so TDK can just use this one-man advantage, try and gain uh, position on that top line wave. Push that in, and then they'll have the extra ability to five versus four at dragon with a double magic penetration rumble ready to roll. Yeah, yeah, with Dragon Up, it's going to be very scary. As you mentioned, TP advantage for Seraph means TDK starts it right now, even though they're on top of the Scuttler. They just don't seem to care whatsoever. Recall from Flares. No Ash Arrow, though, so that's one part of the combo not available. Zoning ball from Orianna. Recall from Rumble. Smite comes in, gets taken by Kez. 2-0 on Dragons. Enemy still unwilling to fight as they know there's a bunch of threats. Wither goes for the hook. For Ooh, nearly mad lives him with it. But Kez starting to hit a body drop. A body drop has to get ulted out by Otter. Good save, but still the dragon for a bunch of wasted time of enemy esports. Yeah, enemy actually just waiting around there. Cost them a flash and ultimate off of Kalista. Lose quite a bit of power out of the bottom lane. When you have a choice like that, I guess they were trying to go for a steal. He couldn't get enough uh, auto attacks into the dragon, but 
Usually better just to fully commit elsewhere on the map. Swing and a miss. Yeah, no catch right there. Otter gets a satisfying minion wave clear with the max Q, but Tempered Fate looks like it's not going to do much of anything right now. Still a tied game, except the two Dragon lead for TDK, and Seraph did have to use his teleport, so that's going to, again, switch back and forth to where Flares will have that TP advantage in the next couple of minutes. Enemies so far have managed to use that advantage decently by uh, getting some kills bot lane. Yeah, it's actually pretty hard for enemy to use that period as an advantage for themselves unless they have uh, you know, Flares transition down bottom and try to take out this top turret. It actually looks to be what's on the board for them. Cool. So they transition everyone up top. Well, Tenacity or not, though, Aurelia, without any armor, is going to have a hard time actually getting away from Thresh Ash, the Permaslow. Yeah. Actually quite good against Tenacity. Smart choice by Smoothie to stay hidden. If Flares over steps, he will die to an Ash or into Hook Flay, most likely. Flares Ooh. only has the one deep ward at red buff. Ooh, man. They're giving him a lot of room, though. Looks like it's not going to be a kill picked up as Kez roams into the top lane, though. Seraph lying in wait in the brush on top side. Oh, oh the ult's only going to be slows right here. Otter pops the heal, but still gets locked up. Kill grab. Binder drop will land the double CC, but Flares gets arrowed out of his own teleport, so nothing gained for enemy esports. Now the chase on towards Bishu. Enix getting a lot of damage done. Barrier pop. There's a land here, but it's not going to be enough. Trashy gets the kill. Enemy answer back. Yeah, there's something gained, and we're still at an even game here. So enemy able to get control of mid lane. Yeah. And bottom lane. So yeah. they actually have two lanes controlled, and they're the ones with the pushing power. Aggressive Flares had the Triforce, killed Latman under his turret with the Ash Arrow down. It was just kind of simple for the Aurelia player. And now enemy esports with the numbers advantage just push in for the mid lane. These guys now holding a bit of a lead, and for the first time are winning in this game. That's going to be a huge influx of global gold with two turrets taken. Oh, they didn't quite get the bottom one there. Never mind. Still going to be a significant amount, though, because they did get the solo kill here on Latman. There's the interruption. And he gets a, a little bit frisky, probably. Flares just flashes straight on him. Jeez. Yeah, there's there's W max damage. All right. Q to a minion flash east. Your Q is still up in case they flash out. Or, you know, CC or anything. That's that's really bold to flash to say, I know I'm going to kill him. Yep. Able to use uh, the final Q as well, just for extra damage and burst him under the turret. Strong play there from Flares. One of the Typical plays we've seen to get him up to the top of the solo queue ladder. Mm -hmm. All by himself. Meanwhile, though, enemy have rotated back up to that top side. They want to claim that last outer turret. And looks like there's going to be no contest here. Otter, oh, okay, there we go. We're fine. But Trashy and Vonda Drop show up as well as Flares help knock this one down. Four guys on this side of the map. Bottleman Adder does get killed off by Latman and Smoothie at the same time, so it's still an objective trade on the other side for TDK, but this push is still happening, and Inox can join at a moment's notice from the mid lane. Yeah, Seraph does have ultimate. I doubt they're going to get much work done here. Uh, really what you need to watch out for is the Ash Arrow inside a jungle corner. That would be devastating for oh, enemy. They cannot afford to get caught out, even if they have this full jungle warded up. If they someone gets tagged with an Ash Arrow, uh, TDK definitely have the possibility of jumping on them very quickly. Yeah, absolutely. So much AoE, you can't even help the person that got tagged. You just have to leave them to fend for themselves. And that'll always feel pretty bad, but sometimes it's what you got to do in this game. Kez actually does have all the kills from his team, though. He's got an incredibly high concentration. He's actually the richest member on the map. I guess he's tied with Otter right now, so Kez is kind of the carry force here. But he's just trying to get into tank stats here, and and you know with T with enemy having really good target selection by being so mobile, having a lot of ways of diving the back line, a big tank means a little bit less than in a lot of other compositions. It's not like he's running in and tanking Sejuani ults or Ash arrows. True, their goal isn't really to cut through the tank; it's to work around him. So Kez is going to have to put extra effort into landing that Sejuani ultimate. Mid lane low, but not going to get completely picked up there. Flares. <laughs> Solo laners <laughs> fighting over the CS. Guys, you're both my fantasy team. Just just give it. It doesn't matter who gets it. Just, you know, be safe and pick up kills so I can win in PTL FL4. Kaz taking a little bit of damage, but he knocks not choking him down. Not that hard. 
Really do want to see enemy utilize flares here on this Aurelia. 2-0 Aurelia has got the Merc Treads plus Trinity Force. Is in a great position to draw a lot of threat to one side of the map. As of right now, though, grouped up in defense of their last outer turret. It also and puts them around Dragon. True enough. Dragon about to come up here. That's exactly what TDK want. Yeah. Grouping around Dragon here. This is the fight they are preparing themselves for. Enemy have vision, though. Good early start for them. We'll see how well they can spread out during the fight, though. Uh, right now, it's enemy who have managed to wrest vision control away. Hawkshot used globally to go a couple thousand units. And uh-oh, Latman barely dodged the chain from Inox. That could have been the makings of a kill right here. And now the battle for Dragon has begun. Rend is stacked Look up. at Body Drop's trying to take the arrow right now because he knows he can rely on Callista Ultimate. Body Drop, the point man. Dragon one picked up the stun onto Seraph. Only a shockwave to buy some time. Flares in the back line. Equalize used as well. Now how's the engage going to be? Flares quite low towards the back line. Goes Rumble and he's going to die off. And now the chase in towards Smoothie. That's going to be the kill for Inox. A 2-0 for Enemy plus Dragon. Yeah, great sidestep there from Enemy. Able to take TDK's initiation and work right around it. There's the kills. See what uh, lanes they can pressure at the moment. Going to stay mid because bottom's being cleaned up by Kez already. All right, interesting choice right here to stay for the lane, but they're going to get it after all. None of TDK are here to defend. And so more objectives picked up for enemy esports off the backside of that team fight. And this is now a very sizable lead for the guys in red. Yeah, really well played from enemy to work around all four of those giant ultimates from TDK. Let's take a look at how they pulled it off. Dragon secure is pretty, uh, let's say, easy with Callista. The sigil, the sigil was used just on Gragas, actually. That was one they didn't even have to work around. All right, Flare stays alive with a flash over the wall. Yeah, I don't Four understand why Kez, why Kez would ult the Gragas. When you have a 5v5 AoE team, like I mean, using Sedgel to steal Dragon. Or not something. stealing Dragon with yeah. the Sedgel. It's just one of the worst uses of it. Yeah. It's not Ziggs. Like, that one at least you can get away with. But Enemy Esports doing an early risky Baron attempt right here with only three. Teleport comes in. And yeah, you said four guys were bottom lanes, so why not just send your entire team to the objective on the top side that's going to go to Enemy Esports with no contest from TDK? Yeah, great move here. Back-to-back -back actually calls from Enemy. They're showing such great calls, such great mid-game calls here. Such an improvement from yesterday as far as the team play for Enemy. Really taking that uh, loss in stride and coming back strong on Sunday. Yeah, pretty incredible stuff. Then Enemy Esports definitely looking much better in the mid lane. It was also pointed out to me that Seraph had actually used TP in the attempt to kill Flares. Uh, down in the bot lane, so just no way at all of TDK showing up to that fight. And I mean, reacting well to some, honestly, misplays of TDK, not respecting Baron being an option. Yeah, I don't know how many chances you get to go with a full AoE ultimate team with TDK. You don't get too many more uh, opportunities to stack those before enemy are going to tear you apart with a split push. Now they've got Baron Empowered Aurelia split push going on. Yeah, good luck with that one. It was already, she already got away from a 1v2. Now you got special minions as well. This turret's going to lose a lot of HP, but she pulled aggro, which makes her life a little bit more difficult. Either way, the rest of enemy are here. Turret number five goes down. Absolutely controlled mid game. TDK have gotten very little for the last 10 minutes. Force to defend inside their base. Well, all right, we'll see if they can pull off a combo from the defenses hiding behind their turrets. That is, uh, this is actually the corridor here at a secondary turret is one of the prime places to pull one of those combos off. Oh, Asher hits body drop, but he's probably going to be safe as soon as the ult gets popped. Yes, it does. Trashy hops out, pops his own ulti as well. But no engage for TDK. Aurelia's still bottom this entire time. The TDK are looking for that five-man combo in the jungle. Aurelia's making quick work of that uh, bottom turret. Got the Baron minions at her back. And she can just use a spell onto the minion, get a Sheen proc, or just activate W. <laughs> She's going to take up a lot of damage from Seraph down a half HP, but walks away fairly cleanly. Even Kes is around, but this turret's still losing health. Really wants to go finish that one off. Trying to protect the cannon as long as possible, but on Kez. 
They stun him as well. Lantern's got to keep it safe, but Kevs just jumps away with the Q regardless. But the rest of enemy are still coming in for this inhibitor. They knock it down 26 and a half minutes in. Big lead for enemy esports. See if they can quickly move up towards mid because they've got another line of minions still. They don't have to back off yet. You're absolutely right about this. They're just not taking damage running around the map. The mana bars are getting a little bit low. It relays at half, and then Gragas and LeBlanc nearly out of mana here. So maybe they do take a brief respite. Baron is timing out in the next 10 to 15 seconds. So enemy esports will slow down just a little bit here. They're going to make like the team they replaced and coast. Well, they do have the entire map to pick from. Uh, they can sweep clean all of the neutral objectives. Bus boy, very happy with the TSM victory. His spelling's really improved lately. <laughs> should put him on the analyst desk. Everything about that statement correct. Checks out. Uh, unless you were doing uh, coding syntax, then it would be exclamation equal sign bad. <laughs> Computer science joke. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Move. I know they are farming. I get it. You guys know that he actually likes it when you boo, right? <laughs> Freak lives for this moment. All right, let's see if enemy can uh, fill up the jungle with wards, though. They've got TDK penned up inside their own base, and they've got the entire map to work with. So, Inox actually going to go with that elixir. Look for some uh, LeBlanc picks. See if he can burst somebody out. 100% zero. Uh, I think it's quite likely, actually. Kez is some damage on Kez, the that's a difficult target to go for. That guy's got like 130 magic resist. Maybe you don't go for him. All right, well, the entire time, though, Super Minions keeping pressure bottom while Flares does his work top. All that they have to do is wait. And they are so far ahead that they can afford to split their focus uh, while keeping up TDK inside their base, able to get the Dragon as well as the split push, same time. And they will reconvene outside the base as soon as Flares gets that wave up to the secondary turret. Yeah. Uh, you know, barring any missteps here, uh, enemy should be able to continue on with split push in order to gain access uh, to the other inhibitors because they already yeah. have that one down. It just makes all the consecutive ones so much easier. Absolutely. Uh, and they just want to continue with the split game so that they don't give any sort of opening for TDK to layer ultimates. Right, they've got to dodge away from those ultis. We've seen games just get turned around by one bad team fight. Flare's actually a bit over aggressive. 1v3 inside the base, he will die for that, and the gold goes to Latman. He needs it desperately. It will mean a top turret goes down, but that's almost the inevitability anyway. All right, so one kill there for TDK. Able to get some gold on that much needed carry, as you said. Ash does have the combo now, Phantom Dancer as well as Infinity Edge. Uh, it's not as huge of a spike. It's a much you know, smoother curve for Ash with the new passive. But uh, still something to be scared of. Unlike that magical journey. Yeah. If you set a magical journey for an AD carry, does it become a physical journey? Nope. Simple answer. <laughs> well, the thing about Magical Journey is that it is a physical journey as well. That's true. You go through the wall. So is every Magical Journey a physical journey? It's all about perspective. Yes. Wow. <laughs> I'm trying, guys. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm fighting the good fight. <laughs> See if enemy could close this one out, though. Honestly, this sub squad for TDK, even though they haven't been able to win a game, they looked fairly strong in the early stages. You know, in laning phases, they had moments in their brief LCS experience where yeah. uh, they were able to make a couple of teams sweat for a little bit. Almost all these games have started with a pretty good start for TDK. They had a lead here, a really good double gank for Kez. They took the first two dragons. But then, yeah, bad decision making. One bad dragon fight around 10 minutes ago, and it all turned around. This is the kind of weakness we keep seeing from TDK. And the weird question for me about this team is, they still have their core shot color. Kez has been there the whole time. He's the one, he's the one who tossed that sedge ult in. 
And, and so I know you do need the rest of the team on the same page and the practice that they've had with the rest of those starters uh, mm -hmm. is going to be important. And next week we'll see what that looks like. But right now, TDK sub squad unfortunately not able to play their mid games as well as they would have hoped. Now I'm questioning Les Boy's tweet. <laughs> Maybe it's when Les Boy plays it. I think hitting abilities is key. All right, let's see if this collapse on Baron works. You know, TDK, they're desperate right now. They, they're venturing outside of the base. New territory. They're going towards the Baron. They stopped the Baron. Yes, they did lose the inhibitor, but uh, they were able to chase the enemy on. Ooh, they stun up Kez. Body slam does a fair bit. The ulti not going to knock Kez out of the lantern. He was out of the radius before it exploded. No pickup there. And here's the interesting thing is so many teams, they choose to win games by taking Baron and pushing with that. But Baron groups them up for the TDK ultimates. So enemy have to pick a different way of winning the game. Nice stun onto Flares right here. The box in the play as well. They're gonna kill him, but they're... Yeah, that man will survive after they all. They and Rumble Oh, ultimate. crucial flash by Inox. Rumble he goes on towards Otter. Body drop gets pulled right through. Kez takes a journey the to the wrong side of the fight. What a juke with that magical journey. But Bar TDK are team fighting well. Now they're the, the team in the advantage, not going to turret down. True. They can get, you know, the 100 damage or whatever they needed on that turret to grab some global gold. Remember, they don't have any of their... Oh, they still have Shockwave. And that might be something that enemy doesn't quite respect. Kez does have Elixir of Ruin giving minions bonus damage to turrets. You can see how badly they want to actually push things down. And slowly but surely, that is actually working. Enemy gonna have to give up another turret here. Oh, oh. my god, the damage on a Seraph. The turret still goes down. Maybe enemy keeps going. There are deep wards that He's players alive. could teleport on, and there, there it is. is. Teleport a bunch of pings saying, warning, 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 Aurelia is here. TDK trying to rob a Seraph is 300 health. Literally, that is it. There's the first kill picked up, and a Bard ulti to lock even more down. Shockwave to buy some time, but there's no follow-up. The other ultis are gone, and there's the engage from Inox. He picks up Latman. Smoothie jumps the wall. Trashy does as well, forcing another flash away from Bishu. And out goes the rest of TDK. Two kills picked up for enemy esports with Baron still available. Yeah, Baron's on the table. They should immediately go there if they want to pull it off. However, there's a teleport on Seraph and Ash coming up in 20 seconds as well. There's a wave inside the base too. They could maybe ride that into the Nexus. I feel like ending it would be overreaching for enemy. I agree. And, and that would be exposing themselves to a turnaround from TDK. So Yeah, absolutely. Uh, gonna take the double inhibitors uh, and head back. Now what they can do is just clean that giant wave that's gonna be at their secondary turret top and go over to Baron to try and play that Fog of War game with LeBlanc yeah. uh, that we keep prepping. And with the double inhibs down, actually the rest of TDK had had to defend their uh, bottom right Nexus turret. It's actually at like 400 health right now, so uh, TDK might have to be stuck inside their base for quite a while. Dragon's up in 14 seconds, likely to be grabbed by enemy esports. We'll give themselves some bonus movement speed off the Dragon 3 buff. Flares, true to his sort of play style, got an early lead and then has played over overly aggressively a couple times in a row and gotten killed for it. Pretty standard for this player, but he he's also still holding up well with the team. escaped from that four man collapse bottom that also uh, was a teleport that earned them a Baron. That's and he true. escaped with his life as well. Yeah. So while he has gotten a couple times, he's also drawn a lot of attention to the other side oh. of the map and gained. Quite a few objectives for his team. Yep, looks like TDK realized if they go for a dragon, enemy esports just takes Baron right off the bat. Very little time TDK gets to leave their base. Seraph is actually holding the bot lane. He has teleport. The rest of TDK have to keep mid under control, but Smoothie getting caught out right there. Kez also going to get rooted up by Inox, and that's going to be a two-man bard ulti to cart this fight out. Two-man shocker to buy some time. More ulti's coming through, but where is Seraph? He's not dealing any damage at all. And finally, Smoothie goes down. Now to engage a little bit further. Equalizer is still available, but is not used. That should be Baron. Despite all the CC that landed on the rest of enemy esports, so you're right. Baron on the table. Yeah, Bard landed his ultimate that time. That was a quality Bard ultimate. And he is rewarded. Bard might just be undefeated today. CLG had the chance to pick him and they didn't. Might have been their one big weakness in the match against TSM. The enemy esports have definitely heated the Wanderers call. Krepo's happy. Enemy esports fans are happy right now because a 7,000 gold lead puts enemy esports very far ahead in this one. Their second Baron buff as well will help even despite this third dragon going through the TDK.
Bard is more popular than TSM. I think that's going a little far. There he is. Chimes, chimes, chimes. Meeps, meeps, meeps. Let's see how the collapse goes here. Barrened up empowered uh, enemy should be able to take out a two inhibitor down TDK base. Look for that AOE Wombo though. TDK gonna bank everything on it. And here comes what might be the final push then. Two minutes left of the Baron buff. Quick bookkeeping enemy esports. Walk in to push the base down. They've still got flares in the bot lane. A lot of poke. Kez loses more health. A great shot clip comes in. Here's the engage. They've blown up Otter. And enemy esports realize the difficulty of chasing away from this comp. Three kills picked up as Sarah Flares joins in. Turret. Yeah, but Flares is pushing into the base. He's knocked one turret down already. Turns right back around. Three kills for zero. One turret picked up. All right. They landed uh, the combo. Mm -hmm. He's dead right now. You want to see you a great see the screen? Corpse? You want to yeah. see this, the game from Bard's point of view? It's black and white. <laughs> oh. Just like Latman's view. Oh, man. Well, nobody, nobody cheers for LeBlanc, freak. Dirty LeBlanc <laughs> players. Yeah. <laughs> Quick, which is more hated, LeBlanc or my puns? Discord there. Hashtag LeBlanc win, hashtag no. All right, Flares on a one-man mission. Your base. There's a lot of time actually at 5v4. Latman dead for 20 seconds, and enemy esports are running out as fast as they can. Yeah, they do have Bard could magical journey the team closer. That could save you some time. Bard, you say? Yeah. Bard could do it? Yeah, Bard could do it. Oh, awesome. Uh, too bad he's not healthy. He's going to collect chimes. He's a selfish Bard. <laughs> wow. How dare you say that about Bard? Get more deeps. All right, well, Flares, once again, he's got four people down uh, at his lane. The rest of Whoa, enemy. Oh, man. he's taking on all challengers. Well, he's buying a lot of time for his team to push the top. And if they chase Flares, these guys are going to lose their third inhibitor. And Seraph and Kez still going for it. The flash away from Flares, the flash follow from Kez. And he's not even dead yet. Finally gets picked up, but the team is right there. Arrow misses. That would have smacked Otter, who had a QSS. And Flares dies too fast for his team to push on in. There's a Shockwave. Hook on a Trashy. Bartle used to buy some time, and will they kill Latman? They're going to try. Trashy rooted up, hit up by the Equalizer, but down goes the Ash. The hook Ooh. won't quite land. Enemy barely squeaking away. Kez on the chase. Ruin King used Seraphs in tow, and they're going to kill almost everybody. Otter doing what he can to stay alive. Looks for Seraph. The Ren's not going to be even there, and it's an ace for TDK, who have still held on. Hey, there. Base may be in ruins, but they are getting a lot of gold out of these constant kills they're picking up. The AOE team, man. You get another pick on flares, and they're able to clean up enemy on the top side. One in hero respawning. A single line of super minions so much easier to deal with than the double, so they can't buff each other up. TDK going to turtle up here until they can win another. So that one, he was really... He only wanted to hit Kalista or nothing. He did not want to hit Gragas. That would mean very little. They still have another ult to go with, though. So Shockwave to start it off. This Bard ultimate would have been better if it didn't. It was a little further up, and it didn't hit the turret. Then they could just focus the turret while uh, TDK were in stasis, and they may have been able to get out of this with less casualties. But good chase down by the rest of the team. Right, just Glory, going to speed that one up. At Man, this point, even helps. there's so many spears in Kez. Otter wants to go for the rent, but too close to Rumble. He cuts him down short. All right, so the gold is within 300 now. As the inhibitors respawn, TDK's base looks all right again. Really, yeah, really, uh, enemy need to use that to their advantage. because That's their leverage right now, is the map control. Use yep. the fog of war. They really have to take advantage. Uh, Inox is right now. Inox is a, he has the power, yeah, to pick somebody. But here's the tricky thing: is of course, enemy have to take it, have to take over map control in split up fights. Even with a 7,000 gold lead, they couldn't win a 4v4. It's actually a lot easier to do since there's no neck. There's only one nexus turret, so flares can pressure the bottom side, and TDK has to respect that. And they do right now. They've managed to kill off flares before anything really happened to them. And that's always been a tricky thing for the enemy top laner here. 
very close game right now. TDK, an impressive comeback off of uh, good tenacity and team fighting later on in the game. Enemy Esports have yet to crack the base successfully despite two Barons. They've knocked down a number of inhibitors but still haven't closed the game out right here. Enemy do have control. They're warding up everything. They're taking the jungle away. They're getting a ton of golden experience over time. Careful with those Poros. Split them up. They may get comboed. And finally, TDK actually venturing out of their base. Dragons in 14 seconds. Enemy will, will only be their third. If it, you know, if they keep, if they're able to keep on stalling here, TDK. Not only do they have the team fight, uh, you know, AOE champions, they also have the long range engage for Ash. So yeah. This very easily could turn into the first win, the only win here for the TDK subs. Yeah, what would that mean for enemy esports? They started their season with a win over Gravity, and then it was heartbreaking loss after heartbreaking loss, and in a game like this, they've got to make sure they keep their heads clear. They were about to win the game outright, and it started slipping away. They've still kept objective control. Baron number three is coming up for these guys. Enemy Esports can certainly get some more control off of that if TDK aren't willing to fight them. I mean, so rarely is a team up five turrets and not winning in gold. But it's True. like all Kez's farm. True. If if it does happen and it, TDK do get another ace, if they get a strong team fight victory, they the gold swing will be fairly big. Next team fight could even just be the game with death timers now quite long, 43 minutes in. Enemy wins the fight, they guaranteed win. TDK win? They might just get it. Latman Chunk Low was forced to flash away. From so the Inox chains. They could utilize Bard if they draw a TDK and split them, I don't know, between Baron and their base. Bard, uh, Bard ultimate, picking somebody off in the jungle in transition. All you have to do is hold in there for a couple seconds to allow Inox to get in position. That's true. And it's a flashless Latman now. He doesn't have enough magic to survive. Uh, a, little, a direct burst from LeBlanc. QSS will not help you very much. And his armor is now going to start being the item for the, the defensive stat of choice for enemy esports. That could be a very big concern. They're Reveal split. here. Kes is going to find Otter. Forces his flash away as well. Arrow's not quite going to land on Trashy. But now both AD carries are flashless. Flare's, Flare's going in on the secret mission down bottom. No minions necessary. He's so waiting at he the door. Want he wants to wait until multiple members show up down here so this team can start up on Baron. And now they have. Uh oh. Seraph versus Flares 1v1. Flares jumps in, lands a stun, goes for the 1v1. And then walks away before. Oh, he's going to be a Rage Harpoon again. They're collapsing. Almost. The enemy are going to get Baron for this. The question is can TDK actually grab a kill? And a really good job of enemy. This is actually wow. strong communication. Those guys, well-coordinated, disengaged from the solo laners of enemy. They are going to come away with the Baron off of that play. Wow. The threat of the split push works out. Enemy don't even have wards in that jungle. They actually literally have zero wards. Uh, sorry, they have literally two wards in the map right now. Yeah, Inox uh, was and managed to play around green in for him. Yeah. So to do that without it. vision is difficult, but they did it. You could argue they should have had the wards down, but they did yeah. manage to navigate that properly. Baron number three here for enemy esports. They still have to split the map up. They cannot win 5v5s. And there's enough engaged potential to jump on a weakened member or an isolated member of enemy esports. It makes it hard to navigate. TDK similarly have to allocate their resources properly. They need to be grouped. They need to hold on the lanes getting pushed. If they can make that final push worth it. Enemy, if they do end up getting the double inhibitor, then with Baron buff and only a single Nexus turret, all you have to do is hover around the minions inside the base. It's definitely a long ways off, though. TDK not likely to give those inhibitors up without a fight. They don't have towers to fight behind. However, they do have... Uh, these funnel points where enemy are going to have to group up to get through into the base. Just get through those physical walls. 
and N and, uh, and TDK need to take in that opportunity when it presents itself. Yep. A little bit of Luthen's poke now. Inox continuing his trend of wanting to hit chunk people out before the fight starts. Flare's gonna jump on once again by two. Kez too tanky to die, and Seraph just does a lot of burning damage. But he can get chunked down just the same. No MR except for that cowl on him. Stun lands an otter. Good QSS to stay safe. And Inox goes one more time for some poke onto Kez. Looks like the mid and bottom hips will both go down here. TDK unable to fight so far, but maybe they find something soon. With the Sejuani ulti, they find Otter. There's oh. a disengage open to catch his flares and smoothie. Not the targets they wanted. Otter drops, and here comes the rest of that fight. Two kills picked up, both of hips down. So far, it's a 3v4 in favor of enemy esports. But where's the cleanup going to be? A second kill for flares. That might be the kills they needed to win the game. Flares comes in, but he's going to get hooked into the fountain. That's a flash away from from it. Inox is there to clean up though. It's a 4v2 with Baron with two dead inhibitors. Finally the game comes through for enemy esports. Bard is victorious for the second game in a row. Enemy improved to two and two. Ooh, yeah, congratulations yeah. to enemy grabbing another win for themselves in the North American LCS. Good fight there, strong fight from uh, TDK and their subs. In the end, never gave up a single game that they were fighting in. Unable to come home with a victory, but strong fight. Yeah, props to TDK for getting those those team fights turned around to hold their mid game afloat. And props to Enemy Esports for despite giving up all those advantages, it's got to be disheartening, but they found a way to answer back. They kept with the flare split push, they kept with the game plan. Inox screened for him to make sure he stayed safe. And after Baron number three, they finally got what they needed. So, enemy esports. They fought Gravity. They fought Team Solo Mid. They fought Team Liquid. They've now fought Team Dragonites. And they're two and two after facing three playoff teams and a newcomer. Impressive for a new team. Now, by what we hear, TDK will have their full intended roster, the one they have been scrimming with, next week. Now, those players have been in America playing with them. It's not like this is going to be a completely green team. It'll be new for them playing on the big stage together. But that TDK lineup will reportedly be at full strength next weekend. They did start 0-4. I don't think they could have expected much more than that when they're playing with two to three subs the whole way through. But maybe the season starts to turn around for TDK very rapidly when the two new starters come in. That is definitely the goal. Will be looking to uh, improve their performance next week. And Ox definitely much happier. Yep. Than last we saw him in the LCS. Got a wolf <laughs> pet, I suppose. The, the LeBlanc worked though. Inox 5 1 and 5 for all the team fight losses that uh, enemy had racked up towards the mid game. The only death that Inox had the entire time was that that single ace that they had for the misstep near the top lane inhibitor. Otherwise, though, a impressive game for Inox. His assassins seemed to be honestly better than his poke champions. He played a lot of Cassidy throughout Challenger and at the very beginning of the LCS split. That was what he played against Gravity. It's what he won with. We talked a little bit about it with uh, Team Impulse on the analyst desk and how Xiao Wei Xiao seemed to be more effective on assassins than team fighters. I think the same right now is actually true for enemies in Ox as well. And I think for their success, I want to see him on those kinds of champions a little bit more. We'll see what happens with the rest of them, though. We're going to check in with the analyst desk for their insights on that match.